How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Baking World Tour, where we try and bake something from every country in the world. And in this week's episode, we're doing a Bolivian bread. It's called pan casero. That is if I didn't butcher the pronunciation. Cheese filled buns in good old English. What makes these special is the use of a sponge to make the dough extra nice and fluffy. It's a perfect cheesy snack. So let's get to it. Here's what we need. For the dough, we'll need some strong white bread flour, milk, an egg, salt, yeast, some sugar, soft butter, and for the filling, we're gonna use some mozzarella, some feta, and a whole egg. And last but not least, we're gonna use one egg yolk mixed with one teaspoon of milk for glazing. And as for the equipment, we'll need a tray with some non-stick paper, bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, a brush, and that's about it. So we might as well start with the filling. Grab a large bowl, add your feta, the mozzarella and the egg and mix it all together well. You really want to mash it up. All the recipes that I've found so far suggest only to sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top of the bun. But I like my cheese, so I came up with this version here. The way I see it, the more cheese, the better. I hope you agree. And you can also use different cheeses if you want to. But regardless of what you use, mix it all up, scrape it into a bowl and leave it on the side for later. Now we can get on with the pre-ferment, which I mentioned earlier. And this specific pre-ferment is called a flying sponge. And as the name suggests, it's a quick pre-ferment. And because we want the quick pre-ferment to rise quickly, we're going to use slightly warmer liquid this time. And I'll show you a little trick later on to balance out the temperature of the pre-ferment. For now, all we need to do is grab a bowl, add all of the milk, then follow that with all of the yeast and a portion of the total flour. But of course, make sure your yeast is well mixed and hydrated before you add the flour. Mix the pre-ferment until it's all nice and smooth and you don't see any lumps. Now we can cover it up and leave it to rise. It should take 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. But you want it to be visibly puffed up and full of tiny little bubbles. And this is looking pretty good. So because we're kneading the dough by hand, it's going to warm up quite a lot and the pre-ferment is already warm. So the only way to control the temperature here is by refrigerating the flour. You could have made the pre-ferment in a large bowl from the get-go. I only did it in my small bowl to show you how it's rising. So in my large bowl, I'm going to add back the pre-ferment, follow that with the egg, which is also cold from the fridge, then the salt, the sugar and a good old whisking. Make sure you whisk it well until the salt and the sugar have dissolved completely. Now follow this with the soft butter and finally the flour. Once you've added all the ingredients to the bowl, grab a scraper and mix it to the dough. Mix it in the bowl until there's no more dry flour left and then tip it out on your table and continue with kneading. This kind of dough is not too sticky. So I'm going to use my regular kneading method here. What I like to do is press down and forwards with the heel of my right hand then using the fingers of my left hand, I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand and turn it and repeat. It may be a little bit sticky to begin with, but that's because there's a lump of butter in the dough. As we keep kneading it, the mess will disappear. You want to knead this dough for around 5 minutes in total, and once it's nice and smooth, it's ready. Now pop it in your bowl and take its temperature. We want it to be around 25 degrees Celsius. And because we are using that pre-ferment, this dough will rise quite rapidly, so you really don't want this to be too warm. And that's why we use cold flour. Now we can cover it up and leave it for one hour. It should be visibly puffed up before you take the next step. And this is looking good to me. Now we can divide the dough. Now I'm gonna weigh the dough and make six buns out of it. And they will be quite large. And if you wanna make smaller ones, simply divide the dough into eight or into 10. But do use your scales for this. It's impossible to make them all the same size just by eyeballing it. Trust me. After dividing, we need to pre-shape. Take a piece of dough, flatten it out, fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until the reach point where it started. Then flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table, then pick it up, pinch the seam together at the bottom, and that's your pre-shaping done. And you've got five more to practice on. After the pre-shaping step, we'll have to let these rest. Because we rolled them nice and tight, they would be impossible to stretch out at this point. So we have to cover them up and let them to sit for around 20 minutes. 
let the gluten relax. And of course, that will also give us a little bit more fermentation time. So 20 minutes later, grab your tray. And now we have to start getting the buns towards the final shape. Now we're not going to stretch them fully, but we're going to get them in the right direction. So pick up a bun and using both hands with the index fingers and the thumbs, stretch it going around in a circle. You want the middle to be thin and you want to have fat lip around the edge. I believe in Bolivia, they simply leave the buns round as they are and just put the cheese on top of them. I want to fit some extra cheese in there. So we're going to create a nice little pull for it. This actually reminds me of the Norwegian custard buns that I did. They were shaped the same way, but filled with custard and covered in coconut. But let's get on with these bad boys. Once you stretch them all out, cover them up, you can start preheating the oven now. 160 degrees Celsius with a fan on. They'll take around one hour to rise properly. And once they're nicely puffed up, we can fill them up and bake them. Now the little pull that we created in the middle it has kind of disappeared, it's puffed out. So before you add the cheese, using your fingertips, press the middle of the dough and stretch it out. Again, you want the middle to be nice and thin and you want a fat lip around the edge. And take your time, there's no rush. Just stretch them out gradually. And now we got plenty of space for the cheese. But before the cheese, we need to glaze the buns. And I love this glaze, it works perfectly for any enriched dough. It's definitely one of my favorites. It makes the crust nice and chewy and gives it that deep golden brown color. And it adds a good taste as well. So brush your buns all over, you can brush them twice actually. Now we can fill them up. Try and get the same amount of filling in each. And you could fill this kind of bun with anything really. You could even make like little mini pizzas. Or whatever you add in there, make sure you press it in and spread it out nice and evenly. I find that a spoon is a perfect tool for this. And as you press the filling in, the buns should stretch out a little bit more. And these are looking perfect, so let's stick them in the oven. They'll take around 25 to 30 minutes, depending on your oven. But once they're nicely puffed up and golden brown all over, they're ready. And that's how you make Bolivian style cheese buns. You must admit they look pretty good. And I can tell you that they tasted amazing too. So what do you reckon to this recipe? Have you tried something like this before? What's your favorite kind of cheese bread? Let me know down in the comments. And if you have any questions or suggestions, also let me know. And check out the other videos in the Baking World Tour. And of course, click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.